Now, the gender minority stress framework, you have that diagram in front of you. So this diagram encourages you to look downstream, right? Arrows are one directional. I want you to flip your perspective, and I want you to look upstream at that very first box, enacted stigma and related stressors. And when you do that, I want you to think about Michael. Michael is a 25-year-old who identifies as a transgender male. And Michael, about six months ago, finally got the promotion that was much deserved and much desired. And with that promotion came a new office in a new building with new coworkers. And almost immediately after he assumed that new position, he became the target of daily harassment, bullying, and discrimination based solely on what bathroom he should use. So if that has never been your lived experience, I just want you to take, close your eyes, take a few moments, and think about the impact of that on your own mental health and physical health. And then I also want you to think about what lengths would you go to to deal with that? So I want you to hold that I want to keep Michael in your thoughts. We're going to talk more about the minority stress framework. So the key point is that stressors specific to gender diverse people lead to poor mental and physical health outcomes. And the more minority identities that someone has, the more likely they are to be the victim of discriminatory experiences in anti-trans bias. We're going to talk about those downstream effects. These are our health disparities, the health inequities that we're going to cover. So here's the links Michael went to. Michael spent hours mapping out all of the public bathrooms that were close enough to his building that he could get to and back to his office before anyone noticed he was gone. And then when Michael realized that wasn't sustainable, he decided that his only option was to restrict his fluids so severely that he needed medical intervention for severe dehydration and medical intervention for severe constipation. He had been in remission for over eight months. All of those symptoms returned with a vengeance. So when Michael came to see me for that follow-up visit, Michael did not need me to be an expert prescriber. I thought he did, right? That's what I wanted to do. I mean, is it, I mean, that's what I do. He didn't need that. What Michael needed was for me to be an affirming mental health care provider and to ask him about his lived experience. And when I finally did that, then we were able to bring in a team of people and work with Michael. You can't medicate away discrimination. Okay? You, can't mitigate, you can't medicate away someone being targeted because they want to go to the bathroom. 